Hey, a lot of people in life write wills, instructions that should be carried out when they die. Now usually these are just about things. Usually these are things to do with money, property, nothing too exciting. Sometimes though people leave very strange last requests, perhaps even disturbing. My name is Danny Burke and I'm calling them the top 10 creepy last wishes. Starting off at number 10 now we have the Mad Hatter. Solomon Sanborn was a Mad Hatter from New England who made one very specific request when he died. He wanted a pair of drums to be made out of his own skin and then be given to his friend. There was one condition though, his friend had to go to the top of the nearby Bunker Hill on June 17th every single year and drum the song Yankee Doodle Dandy. I'm not sure if this was a joke between friends or some sort of twisted revenge from beyond the grave. I may have to go to Bunker Hill on June 17th to find out for myself. Next up at number 9 now we have The Vampire. Harold West was a British doctor who died in 1972. Now he kind of had a bit of a thing about vampires shall we say. He believed they were totally real and even more than that he was scared that he would turn into one when he died. Because of this he left clear instructions for when he died. He wanted his own doctor to drive a steel stake right through his heart. As far as I know his doctor obliged in this wish, although I'm not sure why it was a steel stake. I thought it was supposed to be wooden ones that would kill vampires. No? Have I got that wrong? If we have any vampires watching this then please clarify for us all. Next up at number 8 now we have Gunther. Gunther was a dog. His owner was Countess Catherine Oldberg of Germany. When she died in 1991, she left her $80 million estate to Gunther III, her pet dog. When he died, the estate actually passed to his only offspring, Gunther IV. I am not making this up. The dog's son, another dog called Gunther, now lives in a multi million dollar mansion. He has a personal maid, a chauffeur driven limousine, and a custom built swimming pool. That is really weird. I mean, I love dogs as much as the next person, but yeah, I don't think either Gunther needed this. Moving on to number 7 now, we have John Bowman. He was a wealthy American tanner who died in 1891. In his will, he left $50,000, a small fortune back then, for his mansion and mausoleum to be maintained by his servants. Okay, seems a little bit weird, right? But this is where it gets very strange. He also insisted that the servants make and prepare dinner for the family every night, even after they were all dead. He did this because he was convinced that he, his wife, wife and their children would all be reincarnated one day and would return to the mansion and probably be hungry upon their arrival. The money finally ran out in 1950, 59 years after Bowman's death and we can only assume that the dinners were faithfully made every single night by those servants. Moving on to number 6 now we have Worthy Boys. This one is just straight up creepy. When Reverend Guion of Surrey England died in 1929 he left £50,000 so that people People could buy boys underwear for, and I quote, worthy boys that lived in that town. The lucky boys underwear would have Guion's present printed on them in block capitals. Nobody is quite sure what made a worthy boy. Most people don't even want to think about that. Even if this was well meaning, I don't know if it comes across like that. I think just give the money to charity. Or maybe don't say it's specifically for little boys underwear. That's just my advice. Next up, number 5 now we have Ernest Digweed. He was a retired teacher from Portsmouth England who left a very specific and strange instruction for when he died. He left the equivalent of $44,000 for Jesus Christ to claim if he returned to earth in the next 80 years. If he didn't the money would go to the government but if he did return before year 80 he could claim the money which thanks to bonds would end up being worth over $600,000 by then. Many people claiming to be Jesus tried and failed to claim the money over the years, which is kind of funny. Anyway, he died in 1976, which means that in 2018 there are only 38 years left for Jesus to claim this money. So keep the year 2056 marked in your calendars. At number four now we have Harry Houdini. Here's a little bit of a spooky one for you guys. Harry Houdini was an escape artist and magician who's known as one of the greatest entertainers of the 20th century. He was also a big believer in contacting the dead, and so before he died, he set up a community communication system with his wife. She conducted a seance every single year on the anniversary of his death so that the two could talk. He left her a code that she was supposed to say to contact him. It was Rosabelle answer tell pray answer look tell answer answer 
Patel. She used that code every year for 10 years after his death but was never able to contact him. That hasn't stopped other people from trying though, hoping they hear an answer back one day. Next up at number 3 now we have Jeremy Bentham. He was an English philosopher who believed in spreading happiness to as many people as possible. To continue this in death, Bentham donated his body to science. That sounds fine, that sounds normal, right? Well he donated his body in a rather strange way. He asked for his body to be hollowed out and then covered in wax. His preserved mummy then sat in a glass box in the local hospital's meeting room for an astounding 92 years. When his head finally began to deteriorate, they replaced it entirely with a substitute, otherwise he would have looked even more creepy. Coming in at number 2 now we have TM Zinc. This one is weird and also really nasty, I think. Mr Zinc was a lawyer from Iowa who died in 1930. He hated women. He left $5 to his daughter and nothing to his wife. $50,000 was to be left in a trust for 75 years until it reached $3 million in value. That would have been the year 2005. The money was then to be used to create a womanless library. There would be signs there that said no women allowed on each entrance and no books written by a woman would be allowed inside. Clearly the guy had issues, let's just put it that way. Anyone who generalizes across a whole gender without distinction usually has an agenda or have had bad experiences in their past. And finally number one now we have Still Standing. This is a story of 24 year old Angel Patoya Medina who was shot and killed in Puerto Rico in 2008. His mother said that he wished to be standing at his own funeral, so that's exactly what they did. The funeral home used a special embalming treatment to keep his body upright and as fresh as it could possibly be. With a cap and sunglasses on, he stood there in the corner of the room for a three day wake as family and friends came to pay their respects. His family said it would have made him happy, so who are we to judge? But uh, yeah, the pictures you've just seen are a little bit unsettling for a lot of people. What do you guys think of that one? Which one was the creepiest on the list? What will your last request be? Let's see if any of you have already thought of some really weird ones. Thank you as always for watching guys. My name is Danny Burke and I will see you all in the next video. <laughs>